105.6. As I say, we'll hear the first of this week's stories in round about an hour's time. Um, if you are a cyclist and you're listening this morning, well, hopefully you're not listening whilst you're cycling, you know, maybe you're listening before you leave the house. Do you feel safe when you're out and about on the roads across Birmingham and the black country, particularly now when the clocks have changed, so it's all, uh, you know, a little bit, the, the, the darkness is coming at slightly different times, around about an hour different. Um, there's a recent BBC poll, uh, and what that suggests is that half of you think it is too dangerous to commute by bike. Uh, only 2% of uh, of uh, uh, commutes in Birmingham actually happen by bike. The city council, we know, they've all, they're have they desperate to make this a, a cycling city. They've been spending uh, £24 million, pound, this initiative to increase cycling. Is it going to make any difference? Uh, BBC Midlands today put a camera and a microphone on a guy called Tim Beasley to follow his daily commutes to work. I'm uh, cycling now along Walsall Road. It's a busy road into Birmingham, and as you can see, there's lots of traffic. I'm in a cycle lane, which really could do with being a bit wider. And I've had a couple of near misses. One thing about this section here is it's, uh, there's not too much traffic, but I still think there's plenty of people who would find this scary, like a bus coming past just like that. There's just so much space here to have a, a proper bike lane. As I just here from parked cars, so I don't want to go too far to the right and hit someone or get hit by someone. Tim joins us in the studio. Morning, Tim. Morning. That all sounded, well, potentially quite a bit dangerous. Was that an average run? That was fairly typical, actually. It was, mm. a, it was a typical Monday morning commute into Birmingham. Do you feel safe cycling around Birmingham? Well, relatively safe, but uh, you have to obviously uh, keep your wits about. This morning on the way into the studio, a car came a little bit too close for comfort. It clearly, it wasn't expecting me to be uh, cycling into Birmingham mm. at uh, half six on a Monday morning. Mm. So, uh, you just to, to make sure as well, you wear all the things and have all the things on the bike that make sure you're well seen. Absolutely, but I think uh, motorists uh, sometimes are oblivious to it. We, these days we live in a sea of high-vis and uh, I'm not convinced that high-vis is the answer. I think we've got to put some safe distance between the vehicles and cyclists. And that, when I talked in that piece about um, bike lanes, I'm talking about yeah. pr protected bike lanes of the sort that... Uh, a common place in the Netherlands where there's a physical separation, not just a line of paint or a broken line of paint, but a phys physical se separation mm. between the vehicles and the cyclists. Because this is the thing, Birmingham really was a city that was made for the car, wasn't it? That's right, but then they thought the same in the Netherlands 50 years ago. Um, it was the future. Um, we got mass production of cars, incomes were um, increasing and everybody had aspirations to have a car. Um, and they thought the same in the Netherlands, but then in the early 70s, they started to think differently over there. Um, in particular, we got the oil crisis, the, the OPEC crisis in the early 70s, um, and uh, they, they went a different path, and we're 40 years behind them. Mm. So what do we need to start doing then? How do we need to start changing? Cause, and how much of this is a, a, a physical changing of features, and how much of this is almost a, a culture change for other people? Well, it's both. It really is both. Um, we've got to make cycling seem less scary. I I'm pretty confident, um, and I, I, I know basically what I've got to do to keep safe. Um, but for uh, people who've maybe got into cycling thanks to the um, the interest that's come from the success of the British Olympic mm. team, and, th and that is massive. Cycling industry has become massive. Um, there are still plenty of people who would perhaps uh, take the kids and their bikes to a local park and ride around there. But if you were to tell them uh, or suggest to them that their, their kids cycle to school, they'd probably look at you in absolute horror. So we've got, we've got to do something to make it less scary. And really, people just don't like vehicles right uh, whistling past their shoulder. You get a gust of wind, it can cause you to wobble. If you're not confident... Um, it, it, it's just not what you want. And um, consequently, the, the roads are chock-a-block of cars. 
Yeah. What do you think? I mean, we, we mentioned this £24 million initiative from Birmingham City Council. Are they spending that money in the right way? Is Because they're talking about things like uh, the, the, the Boris bikes in London and, uh, you know, improving certain cycling routes. Are they spending the money the right way, would you say, Tim? Well, I, I, I'd like to be more positive about it um, the, the, than I am. It, it, it's good in a way because it's going to increase the profile. Mm. Uh, the things they're doing on the canal banks, for example, that are going to help a fair bit. Um, but um, really, I, I think that uh, it, it's just a drop in the ocean. Right. Um, I read the other day, for example, that uh, down in Basingstoke, there's a, a project to improve an island. Um, £10 million on that project. £10 million on one little project. Yeah. And when you put it into perspective as to how much is spent on the roads, um, the money that uh, uh, that has come through to the council to do, to try and do something is is really a drop in the ocean. Okay, though. listen, Tim. Thanks for coming in. Good to speak to you, uh, Tim Beasley, uh, a, a a regular cyclist that uh, commutes on a regular basis. We'll talk more about this a little later on uh, before nine o'clock this morning. Now, though, twenty nine minutes past seven, and let's see what uh, the cars and the buses and the trains are doing. Probably not the bicycles. Uh, Louisa, I don't think they cause traffic jams, do they? Not as yet, no. Uh, in the city centre, though,